Hey, greetings, booktubers and other YouTubers. Glad you could make it. I'm Michael Romeo, and I talk about books. And I'm so glad you're here at my channel to hear me do it. I love talking about books. This is Toby. He's my buddy. Yeah, he's a good boy. I've also got Tetley, who's the baby. He's there to say hi. I had the princess, too. I don't know where she went. Where's the Toffee go? Toffee. Come on. Oh, boy, go. Toffee. Oh, Toffee. Yeah. Hi, dear princess. Yeah. Your princess is here. Okay, so we've got... No, don't pick on your brother. Don't pick on your brother. I'll have to put you on the floor. Uh, Trappist is on the floor already at my feet. And TARDIS is over there somewhere doing her thing. Um, but anyway, the pack is here. And we're talking about ten books that I definitely want to read. Ten physical books I definitely want to read off my shelves as part of the Read What You Own Challenge. And saw Criminali do this. And I thought, what a good idea for a piece of content. And um, so I'm doing it. And I understand MJ also did it, but I don't think I saw MJ at Reading This Life. Uh, but I don't think I saw her, so I need to go back and look for that because Criminali makes a reference to it. And, uh, but yeah, so I thought it's a great idea to do the top 10 books on my shelf, the physical books, not ebooks. Um, top 10 books on my shelf that I want to get read during this challenge. Um, may not be the first 10 I read, but these 10 will definitely get read in the challenge. First up is Goodbye Columbus by Philip Roth. This was the first book Philip Roth had published, and it instantly put him on the map. He was, it was well received, and excuse me, thank you. And um, it's supposed to be excellent. And uh, it's actually a novella. Goodbye Columbus is a novella. And then there is a, some other short stories in here. Uh, which I'll read across the whole thing for the challenge. Um, yeah. Um, put Philip Roth on the map. Philip Roth went on to become a Pulitzer Prize winning writer. And... Um, this is where it all started, where it all began. Goodbye, Columbus. I also have another Philip Roth. It's Portnoy's Complaint. Um, it's probably one of his more controversial books. Um, but I'm looking forward to uh, reading it. I read it a long time ago when I was very young. And I'm sure I didn't understand a lot of it. I understood some of it and remember laughing my took us off hysterically re reading this this book um, but then I think I got later into it and I lost interest because I couldn't I couldn't connect to the book anymore because the character had grown up and was an adult now and was facing adult problems and I didn't want to face adult problems when I was you know 12, 13 years old. Um, but the beginning, when he's a kid, I latched right onto it. So I'm looking forward to rereading it. Um, it says here, Portnoy's Complaint, a disorder in which strongly felt ethical and altruistic impulses are perpetually warring with extreme sexual longings, often of a perverse nature. Spielbogel says, acts of exhibition, voyeurism, fetishism, autoeroticism, and oral coitus are plentiful as a consequence of the patient's morality. However, neither fantasy nor act issues in, in genuine sexual gratification, but rather in overriding feelings of shame and the dread of retribution, particularly in the form of castration. It is believed by Spielvogel that many of the symptoms can be traced to the bonds Obtained, obtaining in the mother-child relationship. Um, I guess that's an excerpt from the book. Um, yeah, it's about that deep. 
Um, it's a guy who has guilt issues over having sex. It's basically what it comes down to, and um, just and and it's both. It's very funny, from what I understand. Like, so like I said, the beginning of it I know is very funny because I enjoyed that part of it as a kid. And, um, well, there we go. Part nice complaint. Also, also, MJ, and I hope she doesn't mind me saying this, cur is curating a reading event in the new year, 2024. Um, hashtag 24 and 24. And that is to read 24 banned or challenged books in the year 2024 and this is going to be one of those for me because this book was banned for a number of issues um sexual content language um a number of other things and it was banned this was this was not just banned in school libraries this was banned in library libraries this was banned in a on an adult level um adults being um hall monitored by other adults saying no you can't read this because it offends me well tough nookies time to read it okay um and it's going to be a number of other books. I'm going to do another content upload um, on some of the books that I'm going to be reading for that event uh, in the new year. So, partner's complaint. And number three, Sydney Sheldon, The Naked Face. Um, again, a first book. Sydney Sheldon's first book. Uh, and again, I read it when I was very young and want to read it again. Two people closely involved with Dr. Stevens have already been killed. Is one of the doctor's patients the killer? Someone overwhelmed by his problems? A neurotic driven by compulsion? A madman? Before the murderer strikes again, Judd must strip away the mask of innocence. The criminal wears, uncover the inner emotions, fears, and desires, and expose the naked face. Um, I remember it being a really good mystery. And uh, I'm looking forward to reading it again. This is definitely a reread. And then I've got The King of the Gypsies by Peter Moss. Um, it actually is about um, a tribe of gypsies in New York City. I believe it's New York City. I think it's New York City. Um, most gypsies cling to centuries-old taboos and rituals, don't pay taxes, and can't read or write. Yet they flourish from coast to coast, drive Cadillacs and Lincoln Continentals, and have turned thievery into an art form. You will learn how they do it in this irresistible book by the author of Serpico and the Balachi Papers. Um, anyway, it's a major metropolis that this is set in. And... Um, It just, it just sounds to me to be fascinating. It's the type of nonfiction that I, I really enjoy that just it explores people and cultures and um, quirky, quirky stuff. I love quirky stuff. So, King of the Gypsies, incredible but true story of the mysterious, intrigue-filled world of the gypsy. A world of bloody tribal vendettas and vicious swindles that swirl unseen and unnoticed around us. Yeah, looking forward to that. King of the Gypsies. And then... Gosh, the pet hair in my house. Ugh. Oh, that's the cats. It ain't the dogs. Um, there Must Be a Pony. Um, by James Kirkwood. Um, I've read a couple of James Kirkwood books over the years. I've thoroughly enjoyed them. By the time I discovered James Kirkwood, most of his work was out of print. Thank you, Thrift Books, for having books that are out of print. Um, I can't read the back of it because it's slightly damaged. And, but it's basically about a young man, a teen, a, a teen 
Um, I, I guess it's mid-teens or uh, may, maybe be maybe even late teens. But anyway, uh, his mother is murdered. His mother's an actress and is murdered, and he decides that he's going to find the murderer. And it's called There Must Be a Pony. I'm not sure why it's called that. Um, and it is a, another thin book. These are all, so far, thin books. Thin books. The Naked Faces, a thin book. Portnoy's Complaints, a thin book. You know? Uh, I just noticed that this is a thin book, but boy, look at the size of that print. So, um, thin book or not, it's, this one's going to take a little bit longer, I believe. Anyway. That must be a pony. And then another James Kirkwood one that I never got to read. Again, thanks to um, Thrift Books for having some of these. This is Some Kind of Hero. Um, James Kirkwood is just, he's a wonderful writer. I'm going to do a, an author spotlight on him in 2024. I think I mentioned earlier in, in another video that I'm going to be doing uh, an author spotlight every month. And James Kirk was one of them I wanted to do um, because he is a really good writer. But this one is uh, has to do with um, Vietnam and it's a couple of friends in Vietnam and uh, the things they deal with and it's it's uh, basically a character study, some kind of hero. Looking forward to that. This book I'm really looking forward to, and it's not a thin book. It's a thick book. This one is, this one is 701 pages. Why am I reading this for the 100 book challenge? Because I don't know. I want to read it. Um, this is a book that was on my mother's shelf when I was growing up. It's called Michelle Michelle, which of course translates into Michael Michael. I was always aware of that when I was a kid, that that was my name in French, Michel Michel. Um, and it's, uh, let me just read the little thing on the back here. The child is Michael Benedek, whose Jewish parents have died in France at the hands of the Nazis. He has been saved by a French woman, a Catholic, lovingly raised by her and against the regulations of canon law baptized. When at the war's end, he is claimed by his aunt in Israel, his foster mother, Mama Rose, refuses to give him up, and the battle begins. So we've got a Jewish refugee child being fostered by a Catholic mother and brought up as a Catholic, and then in the midst of that, in comes a distant relative uh, from Israel, who says, no, this is wrong, he needs to be raised as a Jew, and I'm the one that's going to do it, and the one who's been fostering him says, in your face, not going to happen. Um, it's, excuse me, you got my cord. Yeah, there you go. About to pull my ring light down. Um, so, I'm looking forward to this. I, I didn't realize... It was such a chunker, but that's okay. It's still, I, I wanted to read this for a long time, and I am going to read it. 701 pages. God bless me. Um, Anne River Sidens. I love Anne River Sidens. I've read a number of her books. Um, she is she, she's a quintessential Southern writer, right up there with Pat Conroy. Um, this book, The House Next Door, is the only horror novel she ever wrote. And um, it's about a house that gets built next door that seems to have sway over the neighborhood and the neighbors that it is being built in. And um, strange things happen and it centers on one couple that lives literally next door to this house that's being built. And um, trying to come to terms with haunted house, not possible, not in suburbia. Um, so it it's, uh, sounds like a really fun book, and it's not that thick. 
That's the print. Oh, look at that. Teeny tiny. There we go. Oh, well. This book really is really skinny. This is as skinny as they get. This is... This is... 119 pages. Wow, and it's Shane by Jack Schaefer. Um, MJ first brought my attention to it. She read it for, I believe it was for June on the Range, which is um, a meeting event curated by Michael K. Vaughn. Uh, and she raved about it. And just recently, um, the literate Texan and I'm forgetting his real name, Roy, the literate Texan, is, uh, had, had was raving about it as well. And um, looking forward to reading this. I've never read it. And um, two booktubers can't be wrong, right? Uh, and I believe other people read it too and enjoyed it uh, as part of a group read. So it's the unforgettable novel of a boy's love and a gunman's struggle to escape his past. So... Looking forward to that. And then finally, the final one of the ten, The New Centurions, an early book by Joseph Wambaugh. Um, uh, do you like cops? Read The New Centurions. Do you hate cops? Read The New Centurions. It performs an essential function of the novel. It takes us into the hearts and minds and nerves and guts of other human beings. Um... I love cop stories, and um, Joseph Wambaugh is the master of cop stories. Uh, his book, The Choir Boys, was pretty intense. Um, I still haven't read The Onion Field, which I want to read, and I also have another one here by him, The Blue Knight, um, which is another cop story, which probably makes book 11 uh, of ones I want to read. So sure, why not do a baker's, you know, sort of like a baker's dozen type thing, but 11 instead of 13. Um, never mind, my mind just squirrels away off some, sometimes. Um, but anyway, 10 books that I definitely want to read as part of the Read What You Own Challenge. And um, I am really enjoying... I've only just started the challenge. I'm only on book two. I know other people are already on book ten or whatever. Um, they're fast readers. I'm not. Uh, but I'm actually excited. At first I was a little like, I don't know if I can do this. Read a hundred books before I buy another one. But now that I'm in it, it's like almost like a relief. Like I can read these books and... Not worry about other new books coming in and distracting me from reading these books. So I'm going to read the hundred books. These are ten of them right here. Ten, ten physical books that I am looking forward to reading as part of the challenge. And so far, it's almost like a weight lifted off my shoulders. I don't know. Other people doing it will probably understand that. Um, and there's a lot of us doing this challenge this year. It's, it's kind of fun to be part of um, a big group doing such a bizarre challenge. And uh, thank you, Criminali, for curating this event. And um, I guess that's it for now. Keep reading, folks. It's a great thing to do. Read and know things. Bye. And my remote hates shutting this off.